Oh god, sorry I'm late. I just, hopefully, hopefully we're not running too late for the recording. Oh, it's fine, it's fine. I, I, I can see it's a nightmare out there today. Yeah, I'm, surpri- I'm so surprised. Busy. I'm surprised you found parking. I did struggle to find parking. Luckily, there was. I found a really nice clear spot down by the wharf. Weirdly, usually it's a nightmare to park down there. Yeah. There was just like sp- space for three or four cars. I managed to just pop myself in there, no yeah. problem. And yeah. I'm and, here now, so we're all good. Yeah. So, so what is going on out there today? You know I was, was going to say, I, 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 I think it's, um, I think it's some kind of fighting tournament is in town. Fighting tournament. Yeah, some kind of fighting tournament oh, thing. What, what kind? Like me? Well, I, 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 I've, I've street fighting. I think. Oh. Wait, wait. Sorry. What? What's that noise? My car. Greetings, strangers, queer and pleasant. I'm not Laura Kate Magnetdale. And I'm not Jane Eris Magnetdale. And welcome to another episode of Queer and Pleasant Strangers. It's a podcast where two queer trans women have a bit of a chit chat about our weeks and what we've been up to and have a do silly voices and do skits and stuff. Yes, how are you doing? Uh, I'm losing my voice again. Woo! Oh, no. So apologies if um, by the time we get to the skits, because we recorded the skits after the main episode, um, apologies if by the time we get to the end of... Um, Brochal is usually the last thing as well, so... Yeah, I wish you luck. <laughs> I wish you luck. Well, uh, it doesn't have to be a particularly long episode today, particularly considering that we're going to be talking about some of the same things we've been talking about for several weeks. Yeah. You know, it's going to be another of those also, weeks. Also, we've been very busy working on the Summer Showcase. Yes, we're both... We're both uh, the, Doing a sleepy, we've been working hard on a thing. We should, we should maybe advertise this on the showcase. Yeah, the accessibility summer showcase will be uh, airing live on twitch.tv slash Laura K Buzz and youtube.com slash Laura K Buzz on Friday, June 9th, which is at the time of recording, like a week and a half away. Oh, uh, it'll be uh, up at 4 pm UK, 11 am Eastern, 8 am Pacific. Uh, it is about 40 minutes long, with uh, at least... 43 fi- minutes and 7 yeah. frames. Woo! Uh, with at least uh, 15 games shown, 6 disabled gamers telling their stories, uh, game keys being given away, all sorts of stuff. Uh, if you like the thought of finding out a bunch of bu- about a bunch of cool games, th- and also finding out whether they're going to be accessible for you and your specific accessibility needs, uh, go tune into it. Uh, I I'm real happy with how it's come together. There's been a there's been a lot of work. Yeah. Uh, so that's 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 in like a week and a half. I know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm making a a little piece of E3 this year. Ah. there's no E3 this year. Yeah, you've e- taken all of the E3. E3 Summer Yours Games now. Fest, whatever it is, the bit where we talk about games in the summer and show them off. I'm doing one of them. Yeah, yeah. And you're helping do one of them. I am. It's another one of your big. I've had an idea, and 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 it's a thing, and I've wanted to do it for a while. And the last the last one of these that was like huge was um, Mario's butt. Yeah, it's it's one of those. I want to do this thing, and I don't know how to do it or whether I can do it. But I'm just gonna confidently say I'm gonna do if it. If I commit to it, yeah. I'll if have to if do I it. publicly announce I'm doing it and like make commitments to it and like agree to sponsors for it, I have to work out how to do it at that point. Yep. And then I've learned how to do it, and I've done yep. it. That looks great. Yeah. Well, that's that. Thanks to all your wonderful editing, and and. The artist that did all the, the lovely low yeah. thirds and the lovely graphics. We got all all sorts of fancy and all stuff. And the nice going people on. who came and said things and had yeah. beautiful things in the background of all, all their shots. Indeed. <laughs> uh, so that that's that's what we've been working on. Which yeah. in like a week and a half, you will get to see a bunch of cool looking games stuff we've been working on. Yeah, well. Uh, but what have you been playing this week? I have played a little game, maybe you've heard of it, <laughs> called The Legend of Zelda: Tears of the Kingdom. I have, funnily enough, heard of it. Yeah, I... so this was, we just had a bank holiday in the UK, yep. we we had a Monday that was a public holiday, yep. and I was like, cool, Laura's not going to be here Friday night, I'm going to play a little bit of Tears of the Kingdom, this is all going to be good. Saturday, she's going to be a, away again, I'm going to maybe go for a little walk, maybe do some poi in the sun, <laughs> I'm going to maybe g- go and do some nice things. And then Sunday, Laura will be back and we'll maybe do some things together and Laura's got some some uh, showcase stuff to do, yeah. so I'll maybe get on with making some music or something. Do you know what I did 
for the entire weekend? Well, I have some guesses. I played Tears of the Kingdom. Yeah, I know what you did until 5am one night. Yeah, so Friday <laughs> Friday you weren't here, so yeah. I didn't have anyone being like, maybe we should go to bed. Yeah, it was like 2am, maybe we should think about bed. At 5am, at 4am I was like, it's getting pretty light outside. At 5am I was like, go to fucking bed, you silly <laughs> bitch! <laughs> it's... Um, and then Saturday I was up till like 3am... Again, yeah. and, and just playing more Tears of the Kingdom. Monday, I was like, I'm just going to do just a little bit just this morning, just while yeah. I wait for my breakfast to go down. Oh, fuck, it's six o'clock and I haven't even left the house. I think it's fair to say both of us have been pretty into this game. Yes. I think we're both somewhere around roughly the 150 hour mark. We're I, somewhere in that. I, I, if I had to guess. In that vicinity. I don't know if it uh, clocks up it yet. Yeah, I know you were at 140 hours last time you checked. Roughly. And last time I checked, I was at about 150, but I think you've caught up a bit over this weekend. Um, yeah, it's safe to say we're both re- we both really like this video game. Yeah, but I'm yeah. tired and I do need to sleep and, and remember to do other things. Yes, honestly, having the accessibility showcase to have to work on has been a good. I need to get on with another thing that will like take up a week of my life and like reset me slightly um. on. On the obsessive yes. playing of it. Yes. It's probably good to have a big project to work on for a bit. Yeah, and <laughs> I I thought I was done farming <laughs> dragon parts. Uh. And then I realised I'd forgotten about fucking fangs. Yeah. So I'd got like claws and scales and horns and, and um, uh, spike shards from all of them. And then realised I'd forgotten fucking um, fangs, and I needed that for—is it barbarian armor? I yes. think the needs um, fang parts, and I was like, oh, so fuck. I I think I can like this isn't going to be precise, but I think I can summarize roughly where we're both at, which yeah. is we have completed the story. Yes, I think both of us have a good chunk of the uh, the the outfit pieces. There might be a couple of bits from a couple of sets we might be missing, I think missing- but. One, maybe two bits. I know I'm missing one bit off of the the rubber set. I know I'm full fr- frost set. I know uh, I'm missing two off of the uh, barbarian set. I've got the full barbarian set. Yeah, there's a couple of bits I'm missing, but uh, I think we're both basically done on the side adventures. Like we're right at the end of the side adventures. I think maybe list. I've got two left. I've got one left to find. Uh, we're both a little over halfway through the side quests. Uh, that's sort of 70 or 80 of them the, um, done. 80 something, I think. Yep. Uh, I am maybe. 139. Then. I've got maybe 35 caves still to find for oh, that wow. big quest of finding I've caves. No idea on the caves. I've just been. I'm, I still haven't finished the shrines. I think I've still got like six shrines left yeah. to do. I'm not even sure where they are. I've got two Sages Wheels to find. Um, uh, you've done all of the underground lighting up all the, all the light routes. All the light routes. Um, I've done. I think I've done all the Colosseums now. Yeah. I think I've done all the mines. Hmm. Um, I've upgraded almost every set of armor except ones that need bugs. Oh, because yeah. Because catching things like butterflies and dragonflies is a nightmare. Yeah. And I need... Um, I think I need a particular type of butterfly to do the third level upgrades on my um, Flamebreaker armor. Yep, same. Um, same. I've maxed out pretty much everything else like i've got yeah. full um the one that's good for your battery yeah the one that's good for gloom i've got one piece missing from the um cold related one yep i um, yep i've maxed out most of the ones that like i am reasonably going to want to use and oh, i'm working on i'm working on the others uh, i'm trying oh, I haven't to get the others done, done, done the, but... um the classic ones like Set yeah. the Sky, Twilight. It's inter- It's nice that those are just available for everyone this time yeah. because they were looked behind Amiibo before. Yeah, yeah. It's. I think we're both at the point where like we have things we still want to be doing and we're still pottering around doing it, but we've definitely sort of crossed that critical moment of feeling like we've seen we've seen the game. I think at, largely at this point, I feel like um, yeah, I've probably seen. 99% of the game, there's probably still a few bits that yeah. might entertain me um, or, or surprise me, but like, I don't think there's anything big. I'm not worried at this point about being spoiled by everything. Yep, I've started, wa- and we'll get to this and watched, I've started watching some videos of other people playing 
Mm-hmm. As I've crossed the point where I feel like anything I see isn't going to go, oh, I wish I'd found that myself yeah. too much. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm not too bothered about seeing things like people's creations uh, or yeah. the way people have done things or like watching people do glitches mm. or um, comedy builds. Um, yes. There are a lot of comedy build montages on TikTok yeah. right now that I'm enjoying. I'm feeling people a... building the word lol out of <sighs> fucking um, TNT and then just dropping it on a line yes. and walking away. I am enjoying being at the point in, with this game where I can sort of engage a bit more a little less cautiously yes. with what everyone else is up to yeah. and how things are going for them yeah I, I got a long way through the game before i wanted anything to do with advice from other people or thoughts yeah. from other people um and i'm glad i got as much as i did before any anything even started to get spoiled really. yeah yeah, I'm glad I saw... We've definitely, like, crossed the threshold of, like, people are talking a bit more oh, yeah. openly about spoilers now, and I think we, we we saw the ending at about the right time. Yes, like, the day, literally the day after I had seen the ending, and you hadn't seen the ending yet, yeah. <laughs> we were scrolling through TikTok in bed, and somebody was live-streaming the final boss. Yes. And I was like, oop, bye, we better, we better just get out of here. I did not register that, so well done scrolling quickly. <laughs> Um, yeah, I am incredibly satisfied with this game. Yeah, um, did a good job. Yeah, I, I need some time to, like, sit with it before... Because there's a thing we talked about before this game came out, and I don't know whether this is going to feel like it's going to be the case or not. Uh, you, you brought up the idea of, is this going to sort of almost invalidate Breath of the Wild in terms of being a thing you, you would want to go back and replay? And I don't know where I'm going to land on that yet, but I definitely feel like... If I could only play one of the two going forward and one of them I had to put away in a box and never be allowed to play again, if I was in that hypothetical, this is definitely the one of the two I would select. I think so. I feel like it's got some quality of life stuff over the previous one. And like I feel like I've wanted to play more of it after it's done. Yes. I've had more of a desire to stick around in its world even when technically on paper I finished. Yeah. Like, I didn't have any real desire to go and do extra stuff for the people in the world when I finished Breath of the yeah. Wild. And I've finished that twice now. And I think it is, to this game's credit, how much more it has been like, look, even if this little side quest isn't really going to give me a worthwhile reward, I want to do it for the people. Yeah. Because, like, it has made this a much more tangible place I care about Going and finding their problems. Yes, it feels much more alive than Breath of the Wild did. Yeah. And I realised that Breath of the Wild was like still very much under the threat of the Calamity. And yeah. it was dangerous to be anywhere because of the um, the Guardians yeah. everywhere. But also, like this, it just feels way more lived in and populous. Yeah. I... <sighs> It's not one-to-one, -one, but I definitely think there is something to the comparison of this being a little bit the Majora's Mask to Ocarina of Time yes. uh, situation, in that it's clear that by not having to remake all of the assets from scratch, they have had room to go, let's just keep throwing more and more and more things into this framework. Yes. And that has resulted in a game that feels like it has a lot more surprises around every corner and things that might expand beyond what you thought they were when you first arrived to them and you know it it feels like there is a lot more possibility out there in this mm. and that has been really enjoyable yes i think i think if anything the hardest like most unwelcoming part of this game is probably like the first 20 hours because Definitely. that is when you are most at risk of just getting one shot constantly. Yes. Um, like, just the constant death cycle. Yeah. And, like, now, death is, like, very uncommon. Yeah. I, and I've been mulling over a thought, and I'm gonna say this, and it's probably not gonna mean anything unless you've played a decent amount of this game. But I've been mulling over... The phrase from the original Zelda when you pick up that that sword for the first time, it's dangerous to go alone. Mm. And I feel like a lot of what I like about this game feels like it harkens back to that. Mm. That sense of this is a dangerous world where you are trying to take it on alone 
is going to kick your ass somewhat. Mm. And that being a sort of ethos for a game about a world as much as it is one person. Mm. And I think that while very punishing its early game, I think that that is justified by where it goes with it. Yeah, I think so. Um, and there is so much to do constantly. Yeah. And, like, even 140, 150 hours in, I was still at a point where it was like, there's places that I ran through once, did the main quest yeah. stuff there, and never went back to. Uh, yeah. Like, I've only recently gone back to Zora's Domain as, like, a second time. Yeah. And I, like, hadn't picked up any of the side quests there. I hadn't done a load of stuff. I'm, mainly because I'm searching for caves at the moment. It's like, oh, yeah, yes. I better, guess I better do. But again, searching for caves yeah. has been a really nice excuse to go back. And, like, I've stumbled at so many of the side quests in the last, like, let's say, five, ten hours that I have found is because I was looking for caves and that was leading me to places that I hadn't bothered mm. to walk on foot to before and going, oh, there's an NPC who's got a thing going on. Ah, uh, yeah, it's been real fun. Um, on a similar note, um, I have been playing around a little bit, uh, like not properly making attempts on it yet, but learning what the any percent speedrun for this game oh. looks like and starting to get a feel for that. Um... I imagine the most of that is is taken up on the Great Sky Island. It is. Like, I think we're far enough away from this game now to say, you can go straight to the ending, in theory. If you know where you're going, and if you... If anything, I'd say it's easier than the previous game. Yeah, yeah, you, you can, in theory, go straight to the ending if you, if you go, I reckon I know where the ending is. Um... And to give like a vague idea it's not of where I thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> to give a vague idea of what the, the any percent looks like at the moment, um I, I haven't checked since the newest update has gone live whether people are sticking with the old update, which I assume they probably are with like version one point one. Uh you do the Great Plateau as quickly as you can. Um some of the most important things there are getting hot footed frogs in the ponds for making runaround speedy elixirs. Right. Um you do the shrines on the, the, the Great Sky Island not in the order that the game sort of tries to lead you to them. Mm -hmm. um, you go do the Ascend Shrine first. That makes sense. Um, That's the one I stumbled into um, on this playthrough. Yeah. Um, and because that is near the gumball machine for getting all of the, the, the parts, yes. uh, the Zonai things, you can get a glider out of there and glide to the Fuse Shrine mm -hmm. uh, in a single glide. Uh, and then from there, glide uh, over to the, the Ultra Hand Shrine, so you can sort of skip most of the island just sort of glidering yeah. backwards through the route, um, which is interesting. Uh, fusing a glider to your shield lets you, like, skip some huge chunks of some of those early shrines. Mm. Uh, and from there, you're basically just trying to glide off of the Great Sky Island once you're first able to onto one of the floating islands that has fairies, Right. Duplicate it. There, there are routes that don't involve this if you think you're really fucking good, which, like, I know I'm not. Uh, duplicate a shit ton of fairies using the, the like, jump in the air shield jump uh, duplication glitch. So that, like... How do they even work with fairies? Because they run away. Uh, you just have to... They stick around for, like, a second or two. So, so as soon as you land, you start mashing. Okay. And you probably won't pick up all of the ones that you dropped, but because of the way that glitch works... You shouldn't lose the ones from your inventory, so you should, like, if you drop five, you should gain, like, three. As long as you're good at doing it. Yeah, as long as you're good at doing it. So a little bit of practice there. But basically so that with your zero health, you can brute force through the ending by just... any Anytime you're running low on fairies, just duplicate more fairies and use that to stay alive through trying to go for the final boss. Uh -huh. um, there's a couple of things that you need to do with, like creating a weapon that is more powerful than it's supposed to be by doing some, like, stat overflows. Yeah. Um, which is the bit that I'm still learning exactly how to do, but the gist is you uh, put your back to a wall, crouch down, pause. You need to have picked up at least five bows by this point in the run, because that is the maximum number of bows you can have at that point. You drop all five bows in the menu, right. then go to your weapons menu, uh, you drop the weapon you're holding, equip a different one, double press plus, 
drop that weapon, equip a new one, double press plus, and you keep doing that until the weapons that you've dropped suddenly appear back in your inventory. Right. And that that's what lets you know it's worked. Right. Um, and you've basically, like, overloaded the memory and it's gotten confused. And if you then leave the menu, you will appear to have the weapon both in your hand and on your back. Right. And you do that a few times, and the weapon in your hand basically becomes multiple of that weapon's held in your hand at once. Right. So if you, like, get a stick and stick a diamond you found, like, on the way to the final boss on the end of it, you can have, like, ah, here's my one... St it's not one stick with a diamond on it, it's 15 stick with a diamond on it's in my hand at once. And then you go and try and just brute force the final boss. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. I'm it curious... <laughs> How that works because of yeah. some of the lead up to the final. Yes, bit. without going into too many specifics, uh, there's a there's a couple of other bits to it that I I won't go into here for like not spoiling yeah. the ending. But that's the gist of it: is do the Great Sky Island really quick, grab some fairies, stick a diamond on something, and fu make a weird fucked up weapon. And then just try and run to the end. And you don't have the paraglider, so you like you're you're going like Oh Jesus. Any, so anytime you need to like get somewhere that you would need to paraglide down, you've got the fairies in your pockets. So you okay. just sort of fall and let the fairies yeah, save I you. Yeah, I mean we saw that was it the Breath of the Wild thing where the person did the whole thing with like three hearts. Yeah. You just sort of let yourself fall off stuff and it's fine. Yeah. Um, um and you're just constantly Pissing fairies out of you because yeah. you're dying all the time. So I've yet to like complete a run of this, but like I'm I'm I've run around messing around with the mechanics and working out how to. Wowza. Um, I I'm never gonna like be a like a record speed person at doing this, but I like the thought of doing a stream someday where I'm like I'm just gonna play the whole game in one stream and like I think the world record is currently like a little over an hour. If I could do it in, in say, two hours, I'd be like, look at me, I beat the game in two hours, look at me go. I mean, that's, that's an evening of, of streaming, so yeah, yeah. I guess. Um, but you can never update that. <laughs> yes. Well, that's the thing. I have I have the playthrough that is updated, and I have the, I have <laughs> over here the version where I can play with the glitches if I want to speed yep. run. <laughs> um, yeah, Tears of the Kingdom is real bloody good. Very much enjoying it. Um, it's it's good value for for the amount it is. There's which a, it wants to be because it's fucking expensive. There's a lot of video game in that video game. Yeah. Yeah. Have you played anything else? Have I played anything else? Let's look. Did I play anything <laughs> else? Probably. Probably not. I'm I'm gonna. S oh, uh, on stream I replayed like the first couple of hours of Humanity. Oh yeah. That uh puzzle game that's sort of 3D lemmings, but you're a ghost dog. Or. Having completed that game and played through the start of it a bit again, I think I think I see what what's going on at the start with the context of the ending. It's 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 a bit abstract and artsy, but I I think it do, it's it does make sense what it's doing, even if initially it's very like oh oh we're, oh we're not going to give you any answers about what the fuck's going on here. I do enjoy that game. I think it is a fun puzzle game if a couple of the puzzles infuriate my brain. Yeah. Uh, what about you? You played anything else? Um, Finish the Room 4. Yeah, how was yeah, it? It was good. I enjoyed I enjoyed it. I think, I, I think this one I've probably had less hints on than any of the others. Yeah. It was less bullshit than the third one. Yeah. Um... It, it, I, I, I did get a, a bit annoyed a few times with um, the just the panning in and out of the the doll's house into different rooms, and then mm. having to like double tap on the the seal for a different room. Um, and like every time you come out of an area, you have to like put your lens back on so that you can see the seals. Then double tap mm. the seal to break them. Then go back in, and it's like I almost want like a quick menu for like just just take me straight here without having to do the whole pan out, pan back in again yeah. thing. Because by the time you've been playing it for like nearly four hours, it's like, I don't need to see these transitions again. I, I get it. You're very fancy. Well done. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. The, the puzzles felt reasonable. Um, apparently that was only like last year, I think. So um, if, I, if I want more of that game, I'm going to have to wait a while. Um, if anyone's got suggestions, do let me know, because I enjoyed, I enjoyed the puzzle boxliness of, of the first one, and the, uh, sort of limited areas puzzling of, uh, of the fourth one. 
I don't remember the second one very well, <laughs> but I do remember that I basically enjoyed it. So, and the third one was good, but also it can fuck off. But also it was good. But also it can fuck off. Um, yeah, that 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 is the things I have played. Yeah. Well then, on to this. Are you a charming, sociable, frog obsessed, asexual? Yeah. Would you like somewhere? Chill to meet that doesn't involve alcohol or loud groups? Yeah. Would you like to meet some nice forks? Yeah. Come on down to Cafe Fork. We've got cake. <gasps> A range of non-alcoholic beverages. Ooh. And the company of many and various and cute frogs and frog plushies. Ah. Cafe Fork. It's a place you can be. <laughs> Oh, look, it finally showed up to work. Oh, hi. 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 Yeah, you, um, just, just took a bit of unpaid leave, did you? Um, sorry, I was, um, I was on sabbatical, uh, save, saving Hyrule for a little bit. So, uh, what? Sorry, I was just saving Hyrule for a bit. Uh, very important, very important. Um, sorry, I've lost track a bit. How, how long have I been, how long have I been gone? Um, how, well, how many, how many blood moons have passed? What? Uh, how many blood moons? How many blood moons have we had since I was last I don't know here? what that means. Is that when you get the red sky at night, shepherd's uh, delight? Yes, sure. I thought that was an autumn thing. I didn't... Um, okay, fine. Okay. Uh, how, how, how many side quests have piled up since, since, since I left? I mean, your inbox is full. IT have had to issue you with an extra gigabyte of storage. Okay. Um, well, that's, that's quite a lot of side quests for me to get on and be getting on with. That's like, that's a, that's a good amount of content. Y yes. Content. And the counting. Ooh. Ooh. Right. Well, I'm going to go fuse one of those desk fans to my back in order to uh, speed up my walk back to my desk. Uh, give myself a little extra running power. See you at lunch to throw some ingredients in a pot and sort of hum a tune until they become a meal. Okay, well, take this coffee. It's dangerous to go alone. So, huh. what have you watched? Uh, I've got a few things, a couple things in my eyes yeah, this week. Yeah, you looking at things. Uh, the main thing I've been watching while I've been doing a bunch of work emails today was uh, uh, a video on the People Make Games YouTube channel Ooh. Uh, called Investigation, Who's Telling the Truth About Disco Elysium? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so this is a two and a half hour long documentary oh, boy. Uh, about the absolutely fucking messy situation with Disco Elysium. Oh, yes. um, I will give you the cliff notes as it was sort of originally reported by most places, which is um, lead writer on Disco Elysium does a post saying, hey, I've been fired from the company and the company has like stolen money to buy the company out from under me and steal the IP that I created. And then the 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 new person in charge of the company going, Nope, that's not true. He was kicked out of the company for being abusive. And accusations started flying left, right, and centre back and forth, and yeah. legal action started. I also uh, like heard a bunch of stuff of um, the publisher was being shitty, and then other people going, it's not a publisher, they're a collective. Yeah, um, yeah. And then th it, it got yes. very messy. It got very messy very quickly. And this People Make Games uh, documentary... Starts with um with them going out to Estonia to sit in on some court hearings about oh, wow. these proceedings, and spirals into them uh, having sit down in person interviews with basically not just all of the big players that had made accusations, but lots of like individual non shareholder members of the team uh, of of people who'd worked on Disco Elysium mm -hmm. from basically all perspectives possible that might. Oh, wow. have opinions on what went down and I must say they do a really good fucking job of doing their research before going out putting hard questions to the people involved mm -hmm. like uncomfortable questions to them and acknowledging and addressing like this is the answer they gave this is why like 
you might not you might want to take it with a grain of salt and like what it doesn't answer and how mm. they've sort of like highlighting where people have like not provided evidence for the things they're saying and sort of trying to like balance that across the board right and it is a really interesting look at a situation that boils down to there is no clear easy answer to this situation mm. we can't point at like this is who the villain is and good luck because the courts. yeah because the situation is um, there are, on both sides, pretty big accusations that people are making that, that they do not have paper trails to prove. Right. And, like, they can't, there is not a paper trail on the opposing side to disprove what went down, but a lot of it boils down to, did this person get permission to, uh, to buy out the company? Like, did they warn the shareholders they were going to do that and have their permission? Oh. Or, you know... <sighs> I, I, I'm not going to try and summarise a two and a half hour documentary here, but the big things boil down to there sure is some fucking shady stuff to do with how money was borrowed from Disco Elysium Studio in order to buy additional shares of that studio in order to t change who the lead shareholder was. Um, things like uh, I sold this IP that Disco Elysium's studio owns for a pound Right. And then, uh, sorry, I bought it for a pound and then sold it back to Disco Elysium Studio for £400,000. Like, things like that where it's like, oh, you you just took took money out of the company by... Some creative accounting. Yeah, creative accounting that, like, it's difficult to prove, but it sure does look like you took an asset and put the asset back and £400,000 ended up in your pocket for nothing. Mm. And that helped you have enough money to buy... The shares you needed to take control. But on the other side, you've got uh, a whole bunch of stuff about, um, you know, maybe maybe a member of staff before they were fired taking multiple, 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 multiple months of holiday when they were supposed to be, like, leading on a project and getting a real big fucking ego about, like, I won't do, I won't do my work unless I'm the one in charge if anyone else... Uh, even even after I've gone away and been unreachable for months, if I'm not the one in charge, then you don't get to make the thing at all, and uh -huh. no one comes out of this looking clean. No. It, the, there is a question to be had of, can you prove who fucked over who first? And at the end of the day, I think that's the closest that the courts will ever come to an answer is, whose fuck over pre was the first one? Whose Whose is the furthest that can be traced back? Because no one comes out of this with clean hands and everyone comes out of this looking like they have egos and have been scheming and it is a real, real messy situation. Yeah, it sounds it. Gosh, yeah. I'm, I'm... My YouTube subs folder is a fucking mess these days, so... <laughs> tracking down interesting things like that... When, when did that release? Uh, in the last, like, day or two, I think. Uh, I think okay. it might have been yesterday. Oh, maybe. Well, I, I didn't see it, so... I, I saw it doing the rounds on, on Twitter while I was doing some work stuff, and was like, yeah, I should probably check that out. And... Thanks, YouTube subs. You'll fill me with more adver adverts and <laughs> jam my, my uh, subs box full of shorts mm. for people I'm not even subscribed to. And, and then I can't find the things I actually want to watch. Yeah. So, Yay. yes, um, it is It is a very thorough deep dive into a situation that a lot of coverage of has been pretty surface level. Um, what about you? You watched anything this week? I watched a three and a half hour video about H Bomber Guy's thoughts on Mac, um, Deus Ex Mankind Divided. You sure did. I was there for some of that. Yeah, that was during the I should have gone to bed many hours before. Ah, sometimes that's how it be. I mean... To be fair, I wasn't expecting a video about Deus Ex to be three and a half hours long. Sometimes. To, to say <laughs> what it had to say about that. Yeah. Um, is, is, is he okay? Because <laughs> it feels like yeah, that was quite an obsession to have written and edited and recorded footage for. Um, uh, sometimes you've just got to get that out of your system. <laughs> apparently so. Hmm. Um, yeah, that was fucking wild. But... Um, I couldn't tell you much about it, apart from, like, it sounds like the original Deus Ex was more interesting than I gave it credit for the maybe 15 minutes I attempted to play it. 
I, I, I remember buying it because it was very highly rated. I remember loading it up and going, I don't really understand what to d- do. And the game hasn't really explained anything to me. And I have never played anything like this before. So I'm just going to go away now. <laughs> yeah. um, but it sounds like the, the original one had a lot going on. And even the second one had some things going on. And then... Mm. The new one was whizzy and shiny and worked on modern consoles and took away a huge amount of what made the other ones good in the name of simplifying. Uh, Which is a shame, uh, because it feels like if they had been able to go, here is all the things we did previously, uh, and and really well, uh, but now it's bigger and has shinier graphics, would have been up a lot of people's alleys. Yeah. Uh, have you watched anything else? Uh, the only other thing I've been watching is I've started watching the VODs of LimCube's uh, Tears of the Kingdom playthrough. Ah. As n- I've now reached that point where I'm not afraid I'm going to get spoiled on mm. things. And uh, LimCube's videos running up to the release of Tears of the Kingdom, uh, basically 100%ing Breath of the Wild a little bit every day, were really enjoyable. I was yeah. like, I'm very curious what, what, what you reckon of of the new one that you've been very excited for. And it's been really enjoyable to watch, but also it has 1000% validated my decision not to stream my first playthrough of that game. Yeah. Because, my God, I don't know how many times you can tell a Twitch viewership, uh, no spoilers, no backseating, and still get spoiled and backseated on things. Um, Is he one of the people that does the um, chat on screen? For VODs? Ah, uh, no. Ah, uh, but you... Here's the thing. You can tell <laughs> what has been spoiled for him when it happens. Um, oh, no. He's large... He's managed to avoid a lot of s- stuff, but um, I'll, I'll say this in a non-spoilery way. There's at least one thing in this game that you need some additional stamina for. Um, because it, it there, there is a sort of cutscene where stamina is being used. Yep. Uh, he had... Not necessarily the specifics, but hey, the thing that you get there, you need extra stamina to get that, wherever it happens to be. Like, things like that, where people just can't help themselves from... And I'm like, he seems to be having a really good time, and I'm very much enjoying his playthrough, but I'm already watching the frustration (laughs) grow of um, him having to routinely stop and go, this is my playthrough, it's... stop telling me what to do and telling me solutions and people in chat going, yeah, but it's so hard when I can, like, see the solution there and you're not doing it. And it's like, you know what's even... It's not hard to not tell me the solution. You just don't do anything. Done. You didn't... Yeah. I'm like... And if you can't watch it, go away. Yes. And I'm watching his playthrough and I'm going, oh, God, I'm having... (laughs) Delta Rune I'm having Delta Rune flashbacks. And, like, I will probably at some point stream a playthrough of Tears of the Kingdom. But, like... I needed it to not be the first one, oh, yeah. and this has validated that for me. But mm-hmm. I still have been really enjoying watching those vods. Well, like in I mean, the background you played while I work the first bit and the last bit on stream. Yeah, I, I well, yeah, I streamed the first bit on stream because I was streaming it the second the game was available in New Zealand. So anyone watching, and you already played the yeah, intro by then. Anyone who was watching probably hadn't played the game yet, and also I'd already played the start of the game. Yeah. And I played the end. I took a gamble on that one, but I was like, there were so many people going, I won't watch it because I haven't reached the end yet, that I was like, cool, there's probably not a huge number of people who've seen the ending, so I can probably do it safely. And chat seemed to to keep quiet on that one. Yeah, I was being very, like, glance at chat. Like, if... I was in it, chat because yeah. I, was, I was up to other stuff at the time. I was flitting my eyes and going like, does that look safe? Does that look safe? Before I read a message <laughs> properly. I was being cautious. Yeah. Uh, and I think it helps that you've got the automated thing that's just like, no spoilers. Yes. Uh, some people will go, why do you have a message, uh, an auto mod message that frequently in your chat? I think it's every seven minutes. I'm like... You may <laughs> think it's, you, about you may think it's overkill, but that one time I streamed Delta Rune proved you cannot remind people often enough you don't want spoilers. Uh, uh, what about you? You watched anything else this week? Uh, I don't think so. I think that's pretty much it. We watched uh, some more Rebels. We we're, did. We're most of the way through season three. Yeah, that has continued Still to be good. 
Even there, if the, the, there, there was a bit of jump between the end of season two and the beginning of season three. Yeah, there, there it was, was a moment of like, did, wait, did we get to the end? Yeah. Cause... It's like, no, okay, there was just a little bit of a jump between seasons and like, stick with it. It'll, it'll tell you where you're at. Yeah. It did feel a little like, like we'd missed something. It really did. And like, it, 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 Someone it, will sell us yeah. that there's a movie in between and we missed it. <laughs> it got back yeah. to there and it, it, but it was, we had our moment. Yeah. But we're still enjoying it. Still enjoying it. I'm, I'm enjoying actually getting to see uh, some of the character of uh, Grand, Grand Admiral Thrawn, who, like, I have heard from people who are big into, like, extended universe stuff and the, and the books and so forth, that, like, he is a fascinating character. Yeah, um, he, 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 he had his own trilogy, don't you know? I have very often heard about the Thrawn trilogy, and I believe, like, there is now a... A new version of that for the new canon. Yes. Um, so, yay, I guess, yeah. if you're into that. But, yeah, um, it's been interesting to see more of sort of characters we've sort of seen and heard of before from coming in from the other direction. And who knows, if we end up doing a Mandalorian Season 3 rewatch at some point, you can go, <laughs> oh shit, it's them! Yeah, I know what that's about. Because <laughs> it was just me at the time, and you were like, oh, okay. <laughs> There's some people there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, have you watched anything else? No, I think that's it for me. Well then, <gasps> time for this. Inside the boardroom of Supremacy Software. Hi. Hi. So, uh... We've been releasing some pretty big games recently. Yeah. You know, some, some ones with some pretty big uh, hour counts on them yeah. and whatnot. Big uh, money, big games. Big money, big games. Uh, and uh, we got we got some games coming out soon that, uh, I'm going to be honest, we do not have... Okay, we, okay, we do have... I don't want to spend the money that's going to be required to, like, make the whole game polish start to finish. I mean, why would you bother? No. Right? We, we've seen... The numbers, we know that people don't finish the games they buy. They just yeah. buy them. And that sits as, as like a, a... It's like our bank balance, right? We're not going to spend that money. But it's there. And the number go up. And it makes us feel good. And that is yeah. what people's Steam libraries are like. Yeah. So I've been working on a strategy that can uh, allow us to sort of optimize the amount or lack of money we're going to spend on this uh, right. on this game. So right. uh, first first step, uh, we, we tell reviewers, uh, hey, don't worry about uh, frame rate and performance right now. They're going to be fixed in a day one patch. So like, don't, yeah, don't worry yeah, about yeah. those in your review. So like they won't bring up, you know, the frame rate. Yeah. But like here's here's step two. We uh, we put all the effort into polishing the, uh, you know, optimizing the frame rate in like I'm gonna say the first three hours, right? Right. Which yeah, is I like mean, that. That that is, I believe, statistically where the drop off lies. Yeah, and it, you know, it, by then something else is yeah. coming along, and and it's about fifty percent longer than the uh, the two hour refund window yeah, on yeah. the digital storefront. Nice. So I'm thinking, you know, we put the effort in there, right? And you know, we we make it seem like it's gonna run just fine, and then once we are confident that everyone is, you know, no longer in the refund window. That's when we can sort of drop off the money a bit. Yeah, we, you know, we will just stop with the polish. You know, we, it'll be like a vertical slice that we have sold. Exactly, exactly. I mean, I've been hoping we could do that for years. So, yeah, we I can... mean, this is just the culmination of some genius ideas. Exactly. We st lump them together. Reviewers won't mention the bad frame rate. And people will find the bad frame rate when they already can't refund the game. You are a fucking genius. I know. Hey Laura, we've got a new sponsor <gasps> Tell me about our new sponsor Well, do you have a body what needs nourishing? I do have a body what needs nourishing Are you occasionally guilty of eating the things that are not good for it? I do sometimes eat things that aren't probably nutritionally balanced What if you could cram all of the nutrition into this 500ml glass? Mmm, that sure is, I think, a liquid in that glass. It is. It is. Look, I can I can swill it slightly. Look at it that. It does. It does move slightly. Look at I that. Guess that. That is, is a shade of green. That sure is a shade of green. It may look like ugly swamp water, but this is the, this is the sponsor for the week. This is Vita Shake. It's a vitamin-packed drink uh, that your favorite podcast hosts cannot wait to drink. I have been using it 
for a month. Uh, oh, and mm. it's got all the vitamin D and spirulina and other things oh. that you would need in a month's worth of vitamins in one and go. And it does say we have to. We have it's to, got B12. It, it does say we have yeah. to drink it. Okay, and um, and um, okay, uh, chug glug. Uh huh. <laughs> 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 You can edit the gagging out later. They did say no gagging, but we can edit that out. <sighs> it is num- 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 It's delicious. Mm, I feel so much healthier now. Yep. Yep, that's th- the taste of her looking after myself. I can feel it soaking into my bones. Mm. Mm. That's vital shake, everyone. It certainly is. We sure did drink it. God, I hope my face goes back after this. Uh, That's the face of healthiness, I guess. A healthy face, a healthy place. <laughs> so, huh, what have you put in your ears? What have you listened to? What's new? <laughs> really not a lot again that I've put in my ears. It's been... More Tears of the Kingdom soundtrack because, of course, it has like mm-hmm. I I I was doing my little bit of train traveling and just had ambient Tears of the Kingdom music happening in my ears because traveling. I was adventuring, as it were. Yeah. I'm gonna be adve- I'm gonna be traveling again soon, and again, I'm sure Tears of the Kingdom soundtrack will just be in my ears because it's good. I'm going somewhere. Music. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I did listen to one thing that I haven't listened to in a little bit, mm-hmm. uh, which is a little mix of a couple of MCR songs blended into each other that I put together uh, basically a year ago. It was... I can tell you when I put this together. It was in the window of time between Foundations of Decay releasing and MCR's UK tour starting. So, like, in a three-day window right around there. Mm -hmm. Um, Which is a file I have in my phone called Fake Your Decay. Uh, which it starts with the uh, the an offering uh, video, mm-hmm. which was the sort of announcement they were coming back for the tour. Goes into Foundations of Decay, then goes into Stay, the um, live recorded track from Life on the Murder Scene. Mm-hmm. Uh, then into Fake Your Death, and it is uh, the first two tracks just blend really well together, like well enough that in my head I'm still like eventual album could start with that into Foundations of Decay mm-hmm. and it sounds like it's tracks one and two just bleeding into each other. Uh, That's your dead the end. Yeah, your dead the end uh, yeah. situation. Uh, into Stay, which, like, it's just one of my favourite MCR tracks, but also because it, it's because it is a live recorded track, but it is direct mic feeds of that live recording, mm-hmm. it's got a recording quality... Uh, and clarity that is very similar to the deliberately kind of distorted Foundations of Decay. Uh, So the two of them go really nicely back-to-back sound-wise. And then going into Fake Your Death, which was the last track they recorded before they broke up, and is very much about that band um, being broken up, but maybe not, maybe we'll come back at some point. And it's just a little 15 a minute, these couple of things blended into each other, that I like the... The pacing and the 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 sort of narrative flow of it. It's just a satisfying little bundle of tracks. And it's not a thing I can distribute because it's uh, other people's music. But if you want to try s- just, you know, going in Audacity and stitching those tracks together and having that as one file, you can listen to that and go, oh yeah, yeah, that kind of works. So... Uh, that that is fake your decay. Uh, a couple a couple of things. One of which is like a trailer for some shows stitched together that I think is kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, what about you? What do you listen to this uh, week? Really, re listen to the wedding playlist. Yeah, because yeah. it's just a really nice mix. It's, it's just like a nice mix. A couple of hours of, of of good music. We start off with some uh, some Tracy Chapman, some MCR. Then we got some Shock One in there. We've got um. Some big red ass. <laughs> um, uh, we've got a hidden track at the end. We've got lots and lots of silliness and and s- some sort of gentle stuff. Uh, the um, the short 
edit of oh the king gizzard and the lizard wizard king gizzard and wizards her and i um, yes. song two which was our first dance yeah um yeah it was it was nice to listen to all of those oh he's got the power rangers theme in it well. <laughs> yeah uh, mighty morphin um if anyone's curious um yeah it's it's a nice bit of music um follow me shock one classic um, Light Cycles and uh, Prelude are on there as well as as one whole thing, which is nice. Mm. It's got nice little flows of like just some gentle stuff leading up into like very dancey stuff, and then like little rests of more ambient trancey bits between drum and bass because people need to sit down. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's it, it's it's a lovely mix, and I, I very much enjoy listening to it. Uh, it's my go-to. I don't know what to listen to. There's too many things on my playlist. Uh, I need something that I can actually spin boy to, rather than uh, something that's too fast. I always want to spin really fast to, to uh, like drum and bass and stuff, and it's not particularly practical, especially when you're as rusty at boy as I have been, because I didn't get out much last year, and then this year... It's been very wet until now, so yeah, yeah, it has. I'm, I'm a little bit, little, a little bit out of, out of practice with my with my spinning bits. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's been it's been nice to get out a bit. Now we've had a bit more sun and dance and listen to yes, listen to good summery vibes. Very much was enjoying the the nice weather this weekend. It was lovely out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I saw lots of people coming back from MCM with some man. Yeah, not surprised. Yeah. No one's bod- no one's skin is used to it for a while. Oh, no. no. Uh, I think there's everything then. What well, then? Time for this. Ooh. Hi, hi, Laura J, Laura J. Lovely to meet you, lovely to meet you. Now, uh, you are the uh, the authors, obviously, of uh, this year's uh, smash hit, Who Wants the Whale? That big we, fan, big that, fan. That we are, that we are. Yeah. Um. So you you call us here for something or other? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So well, I mean, uh, well, what can I say? Love the book. Love the book. The book was great. I mean, the the characters, the writing, the the scenario, absolutely wonderful. And you know what we were wondering is, have you considered maybe making uh, a follow up? Well, I mean, not. Really? You know, we, we thought that, like, you know, the ending sort of uh, sort of left enough open for people to sort of ponder on their mm, own, I think, mm, yeah? Mm, yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, there's things to ponder about, like, what happened next for the people, and and where do they go, and um, but I think what most people are asking, uh, well, when could we have more japes and, and, and lovable shenanigans from those beloved scamps, uh, Rick and Chad? Uh, sorry, what? You know, the, 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 the two main guys, everyone loved them, they were great, they were just, oh, they were so funny, always up to something, oh, I want a coffee, <laughs> if we, you know, if we could get a, another a sequel to Who Hunts the Whale, I don't know, Who Hunts the Whale 2, even bigger coffee. Oh, oh, I, oh, I see what's I mean, probably get rid of the, the moany one that the, the, the perspective of, but you know, maybe a new perspective, who has more fun with the, the lads. Mm. Lads, lads, lads. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to know what your company culture is like. I think we'll pass. I mean, we've got a yogurt in the fridge. Is your latest dopamine farm consuming your life? Yeah. To the exclusion of your health? Yeah. Hygiene? Yeah. Employment? Yeah. Try hyper obsessant. Tell me more. You can just switch it off. At the end of the day, you can just be like, Bosh, gotta get back to my life. Thanks for the hyper obsession. Had a really great time. If you know you can't be trusted with something like that, you can even just set a timer. It will just go off automatically when it's time for bed slash work at a reasonable hour. Hyper obsession gets you out of that. Just one more run loop of your don't mean farm that is both wonderful and destroying your life. Hyper obsession. I have other obligations. Do you know what I want to see more of? What do you want to see more of? Brochure Justice Warriors. Brochure Justice Warriors? Yeah. All right, Larry. All right, Barry. How you doing? Uh, well, you know, a bit, a bit gravelly, apparently. You, you've been up to much? Oh, I've been watching uh, some of the Fallout with uh, Channel 4 this week. Oh, all right. Well, I, I, I don't honestly, know I have uh, not watched TV in oh, over no, a decade. Well, no, I've not watched TV, but I am aware of the goings-on with TV. Yeah, yeah. So, Is uh, this related to their decision to... Uh, 
F footage of Diana's funeral. Oh during the no, 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 no! So no, what this they is done now? so um, back in October last year. Uh, you might remember I mentioned too. Yeah, you know, I'd, I'd seen there was an email doing the rounds of Channel Four trying to get some trans people to be in a uh, documentary. Oh dear! You remember this doing yeah. the rounds? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um. So they, the uh, Channel Four, uh, it seems, may have lied to several trans people about the nature of that documentary and made oh, it I sound like sure it was, you know, going to be a sort of uh, j- uh, very even-handed sort of p- uh, look at the struggles the trans community is facing. Yeah, you know, what, the sort yeah, of thing that actually needs to be done. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what it turns out it is. Is is a documentary about Kathleen Stock, noted transphobe, and about how she's being bullied and victimised by the evil trans cabal who won't let her say anything. She's being silenced. That now contains these trans people who were lied to about, you know, what the contents of this would be and the context would be. Right. And yeah. they've all publicly done a letter together, going, "This is, you know, how we feel we have been misled and lied to, and that like this is not the context we agreed to be in." Yeah. And Channel 4's response was, "Tough shit, we're airing it." Well, so of course it is. Yeah. yeah, this is why you know at the time I think a majority of the uh, the elder trans were you know putting out quite loud uh, calls for yeah. uh, do not get involved no, with any of like, these people. But I, you know, I I understand the like if you're getting reassurances from a from a TV station like that, they're telling you all the right things on paper, yeah. and you've got that voice in your head going, you know, well if I don't say yes, they might get you know trans person who is the one trans person that parrots the anti-trans talking points on in my place or whatever and you know it's better that I go and say something reasonable yeah, yeah, yeah. you know and I'm, I can see how you get there I mean the, 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 I, I think many of us have at one point or another thought we could be the person who would be uh, resilient enough to stand up and speak out on the topic and get involved in the thing yeah. only for it to massively backfire on us because yeah. we were lied to by a television production company in, in, who were basically out yeah. to do a massive hit piece on, well, I mean, on, on a yeah. on particular group uh, my, my, my thing I, I feel like it's important to say is like this is particularly true if you are a member of a minority group but I think generally if you are approached by a television production company in a lot of regards go in with scepticism and don't give them the benefit of the doubt if you are in any way concerned that they might you know misuse uh, you know your contributions or like you know might be misleading you Get in writing that, you know, if if they are misleading you about the context that you have the right right up until air date, uh, air date to withdraw, you know. Yeah. Like, the kind of thing they would agree to if they're not trying to mislead you and have you. Yeah. You know, because, like, particularly for, you know, members of minority communities, th- you know, these production companies don't give a shit whether you are, like, pissed off that you've been misrepresented. They just want to get the material and not let you realise you've been misrepresented until it's too late to do much about it. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, as I say, you, you see this in other contexts. Like I've known people who got invited to be on uh, TV talent shows yeah. and were told, no, 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 you're, you're not, not here. going to be the comedy one that yeah. we're going to love. Eh? But again, you know, unless you have it in writing, you know, I, that that is definitely not the case. You know, a verbal agreement doesn't mean shit when a you know, production company has decided the spin they're going to do. Yeah. And especially when we're talking about things like um, like um, diagnoses of any sort, or if you are a member of a minority and you're being asked to speak about that, I know the BBC uh, is currently in trouble with the ADHD community over the, a uh, massive hit piece they did about uh, private. Oh, uh, this is this is ADHD. This is uh, the diagnoses. one. This is the one where they went. Uh, I went to the NHS and told them I was doing a documentary about ADHD diagnosis, and therefore they didn't give me a diagnosis because they knew I was here to do a documentary. But and I went then to I a... repeatedly lied on the, yeah, on the phone. I, I went to a private ADHD clinic and didn't tell them I was doing a documentary, and, and told and specifically and, yeah, lied and told them all of the the diagnostic uh, answers about uh, that set, would say I have ADHD, and they listened to me say those things, and then went, "It sounds like you have ADHD. Oh, it's way too easy to get diagnosed." Oh. Oh, well, that's the, that's the true uh, BBC uh, anti-bias uh, even-handedness that we have come to. Ex- I mean, the the absolute bollocks liaring that uh, that that they have come to represent as a a representation of uh, the the structure in this country. Yeah. Point point being, I guess, just like if, look, if you're gonna deal with TV production companies, particularly as a minority of any kind, go in with the understanding of. 
they may use this uh, out of context in a hit piece. And don't go in unless you are confident w- uh, and comfortable with, if that happens, I'll be okay. Yeah. You know, be, go in with that in mind so that if it happens, you are prepared so you are not caught off guard. By yeah, it. ask for assurances in writing so that you've got something to fall back on in the end. And, you know, make sure that uh, you are very aware of what you are saying at all times so that uh, there's no risk of uh, anything being twisted. Um, And and if if they're going to have to edit it together to make it look like you've said something, it's going to be that much harder because you've been aware of uh, uh, not just giving them the one sound bite they need to make it sound awful. Exactly. Have a paper trail and think about your sound bites. Oh, yes. That's ugly. Oh, yeah. Uh. Yeah, oh, good dog, mate. Good dog. Good dog. Right, I think we're going to pop the kettle on. Sounds like a plane. Nice, nice. So, Laura. Yes. Where can we find you on the internet, darling? I can be found at Laura K. Buzz pretty much everywhere on the internet because I've got that good unified branding. Laura K. Buzz on Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, TikTok, Patreon. That's the one that pays the bills. Uh, let's me let me do all the, the make all the things I make all the time. The big one. Friday, June 9th at 4pm UK, 11am Eastern, 8am Pacific. Check out the Access Ability Summer Showcase. It'll be on twitch.tv slash Laura K Buzz. Uh, I believe the version that'll be up on Twitch will have uh, just the subtitles. But if you want to have it with American Sign Language, British Sign Language, or audio descriptions, there will be YouTube premieres going up on youtube.com slash Laura K Buzz. Uh, that should have those versions available at the same time, so you can tune in at the same time everyone else is watching and have the version that has the things you need. Um, it's going to be 40 plus minutes of video gamey things that, you know, if you have accessibility needs, you'll know whether a cool looking game is a thing you can play without having to second guess that down the line. Uh, so look out for the Accessibility Summer Showcase. That's like a week and a half away. What about you? Me? Uh, well, I don't have unified branding. I have a link tree to get around that. It's linktr.ee slash janiac. J-A-N-E-I-A-C. You can find things. I've written things. Uh, the t-shirts I design, the music I make. And you can help support me and help get this show edited and, and all the other stuff I I try and exhaustedly get through uh, in uh, over at patreon.com slash radio. You can help me as I try my best to get to 50 patrons uh, before the end of the year. Uh, super, super appreciate all the people who are already there, and as little as a dollar a month makes all the difference. Uh, I think that's everything, so Laura. Yeah? Will you sing us out, please, darling? Until next time, be a stranger. <laughs>